So let's look at a way to make a sandstone pattern. Uh, this will work for any discrete element pattern, so something that's made up of many repeated objects that do not have to travel over the edge and meet up on the other side. Now we don't want it to appear as if there are gaps around the edge of this, so we have to get these close to the edge of our pattern, but we'll look at ways of doing this. Now there are plenty of ways of achieving something like this, and uh, you can simply make one dot and duplicate it along the edges and distribute it in the middle um, to make a nice tiling pattern so it repeats from edge to edge. Um, however, there are other ways to approach this, and I want to describe um, this method that uses what's called a scatter brush to distribute these dots in perhaps a more uh, easy fashion. So um, let's look at how we do this. So the first thing we have to remember is that whenever we create a pattern, it consists of a number of sublayers. So we're creating it on this layer here, sandstone pattern. There are a number of sublayers. You can hear, see here they say path. And then I've got a couple of other layers, one that says border and one that says blocker. Now I've named these myself, but essentially what the border is, is just a square. So I created it with the rectangle tool and we'll go through doing all of this in a moment. Um, and it serves a purpose uh, of defining the edges of our pattern. And it has to have some qualities. It has to be square. It has to have no fill and no stroke. We can see here in the toolbar. And all of the pattern elements have to appear within its borders. If they don't, and you select something that goes outside of its borders entirely, then the pattern will have a visible gap in between the way it's tiled. So you can see here this one tiling. I have another element here which is actually just a duplicate of the border layer but it is a shape that is exactly the same as the border but instead of having no fill no stroke it just has a white fill. And the reason for this is is uh, for it to just block the background. So if we didn't have this and we had all these dot patterns on top it would be transparent in between the dots. This blocker is just a white filled square that uh, gets rid of that transparency and just appears white, but we can put this on top of things and it will block out the background. And then we've got a bunch of sublayers here that are filled with this dot um, pattern that we've created. Okay, so let's look at creating this. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'll call this sandstone demo and we'll just create first things first uh, a square now you could make this a square of a certain size just by clicking on the screen and um, it will allow you to input the width and height values but I am going to just draw it out. Now this is the size of the page that ultimately I'll be laying out this stratigraphy on. This is a landscape, pardon me, a tabloid size paper. And I want to get this pattern to be sort of the right density for this. So I'm just going to, I'm going to make it actually a little bit bigger than I made the last one. Okay. And so going to change the color of this is just the color of the way the path appears on screen I find the green to be a little bit too bright Oops. you can safely ignore this part okay so I've got this sub layer now and I'm going to call this one border and it should have no fill. So click the red line and no stroke, which it doesn't. And now I'm going to duplicate this by dragging the sub layer onto the new layer button. And I'll call this one locker. And I can select whatever is on this sub layer by clicking on this circle here. And I'll just give this one a white fill. So you can see the buttons I'm pressing there. 
Now, for the time being, I'm going to put a stroke around the blocker layer. Um, and that is so we can just see the boundaries of our pattern here. So an easy way to do this is just to have that layer selected and the objects on it selected and click on the default fill and stroke. Or you can hit D on your keyboard. Now this stroke is a little bit thick, so we can go into our stroke menu, window, stroke, and turn the stroke weight down to like 0.25 or something. Now I'll go back to my layers palette, let's drag this out here. And now I don't want to move these around, so I'm going to lock these two sub layers. Now I'll start making my dot pattern. So one way we could do this is to uh, click on the rectangle tool, hold down the left mouse button and go to the ellipse tool. And I could just make a little dot. So I'm going to click and drag, make a little circle. Right now it's filled with white, which is not what I want. I want it to be filled with black. So I can just double click on that, change this to black, and then have no stroke. So I've just got a little dot and I could change its size a little bit and make it a tiny little dot. And I could duplicate this and repeat it inside here just by dragging it around to duplicate. Um, however, there's another thing we can try and do instead is we can take this dot and make a brush out of it. Let's see how big do I want this dot to be. I think it's still a little bit too big. I'm looking at this pattern, which I like the size of for this page. I'm going to actually make it a little bit smaller. I'm just zooming in with the scroll wheel and holding down Option. Just making this kind of a tiny dot. I'm holding down Shift, so I'm dragging the bounding box corner and holding down Shift to lock it into a uniform scale. And so, okay, that's a pretty good size. So let's say I take this and instead of just dragging it and duplicating it myself, I'm going to make uh, a scatter brush. So if we open our brushes palette here again, window brushes, if you can't find it, and we're going to click on here and say new brush. These three lines say new brush, and we'll choose a scatter brush. So you can imagine what it's going to do. It's going to take this little object and scatter it along the path of our brush stroke. Okay, so we'll say okay. And then we have some options. So we'll call this dot pattern scatter, let's say. So we can have it vary the size along our stroke by random, pressure, stylus wheel, different things, but we're going to fix the size. So it's not going to change. Um, we can alter the spacing, and we do want to randomize this one. So let's say. On the low end, they might be close together. On the high end, they're some distance apart. I don't know what the values are that I should use that, but we, we can experiment. And the scatter. So we definitely want this to be randomized. So we can go to negative values here. So let's say like negative 339, I don't know. And then positive about the same, something like that. And we'll say, okay. So a new brush has been created here dot pattern scatter. And so now if we want to try to apply this in our scene, make sure I'm on the sandstone demo layer. Instead of selecting my pen tool, although you could do it with the pen tool, it's kind of easier to select the brush tool. So let's see what it does. We'll select this and right. So it starts creating a pattern here and it's randomly scattering these. So that's a little bit too tight for me, the scatter. So I'm going to double click on the brush and say, okay, I want to randomize the scatter a little more in both directions. I'll say, okay, and it's going to ask me, do I want to apply this to the existing strokes? And I'll say yes, right? So that's spread that out a little bit more. So now these ones are my just, just my testers. So I'm going to delete these. But I can start painting them inside here. So if I click with my brush again and start painting, you see it gives me sort of a preview. That's pretty good. And I'll just go through 
do this. I think this is going to be a little bit too tight. And I'm rather than duplicating these strokes, I'm actually painting a different one each time because it will randomize differently. I still think the scatter, in, the scatter is a bit tight, so I'm going to go back into my brush. And let's see. I'm going to really scatter it out. OK, applied strokes. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's pretty good, actually. So we could probably also, if we wanted to change the size of them all, we could say fixed. Let's make all the dots a little bit smaller, 80%. OK. So we made this dots all a little bit smaller. That's pretty good. Um, I think this is going to be too tiny for my scene, though. If I come back at it, oh, it's not bad, actually. So I could just keep experimenting with this. I could increase the spacing to make, you know, a finer pattern. I kind of like that, actually, so that's pretty good. I'm um, going to go back into my dot brush and actually make them a little bit bigger. I think they're a little too small now, so 90%. So that did change a little bit. So that's pretty good. OK, we've got a bit of a problem, though. Some of these have gone outside the edge. So we can fix that easily. So now this is a brush. They're actually attached to a stroke. And we've looked at strokes before. And we can just select an anchor point using the white arrow. And we can reposition this so they stay inside. And I can go right to the edge. And you can see when I stretch this out, some new dots were formed. So that's pretty good. So it's adapting. There's still one that's escaping here. So I can actually grab the directional handle and move that a little bit. So I just want to avoid them going all the way out like this, but I want to fill in the spaces. I think it's okay if they're on the edge there, as long as they're not totally over. We'll see. What's this down here? Oh, that's my original dot that I created. So I can continue to go in and mess around with this until I get the pattern the way that I want it. So you can see one thing I'm doing that I find to be quite useful is to drag it right to the edge of the tile. Now this one thing that this uh, avoids us having to do uh, is to make a rows and columns of these along the edges. It's not going to be perfectly tiling in the, with this method, but I don't think it really matters too much. I think it'll be good enough. Okay, here's some escaping from the top. Oh, I've got an extra line there. Or busy handle. This little one bothers me. Pull him in. That's pretty good. I like that. Okay, so get rid of these two weirdos. So now that we've got these, I'm going to select the blocker. So I had it locked, so I'm going to unlock it now. Select it and just turn off stroke because we don't want that lock it unlock both the blocker and the border because we have to be able to select everything on this layer now and to make this into a pattern we simply select everything see everything selected find our swatches menu which I have right here and then just left mouse drag into the swatches menu and it will create a new swatch and so now if we select this this is our test circle and I go to fill and click on our new swatch. It makes a pattern. Now you can see there's some repetition. Sorry, you can see a bit of a border showing up here. It's kind of hard to see unless you're kind of far. And it's, even then, it's not that bad. But I can still go in and tweak this a little bit. So if I wanted to go in and try and get rid of that, I'm just going to go back to my blocker turn its stroke back on briefly just so I can see the edges of this thing. Again, I'm going to turn down my stroke weight. A little tedious, but still I'm just going to lock these two for a sec. And then just go in and I can see that maybe it's this part here, this blank white space that's giving me 
a bit of a, a white order, like this white space combined with this white space. So if I just grab whatever path I have here, yeah, see this one doesn't go right to the edge. I can go in, try to fix that. So in some ways, this is a kind of a forgiving method. Oops. OK, so let's say I've made some changes, and I'm happy with those. Don't like that little bundle dots there. OK, anyway, um, I have to turn off the border on my blocker. So I should, I should turn off the stroke on my blocker. Unlock everything, black arrow, select all the elements on this layer. And now I want to overwrite my previous swatch, this one here. So I can just left mouse drag this onto that swatch, hold down option, and release. And it will update the pattern here. Let's see if it looks any better. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. I can still kind of see the repeating pattern in there, but it's not bad. And so we've looked at another method for doing this. I think this method is maybe a little bit more forgiving. Um, and just as a reminder, we can still go in and change our dot pattern. Let's say I want to make all the dots bigger, 110, let's say. OK, apply to strokes. Yes, so we made all of our dots bigger. We still have to update this over here. Once we've made this change, hold down uh, leftmost drag, hold down option. So you can see it's updated here. I think I have it on my stroke too, which I don't want. So this is a great way to be able to experiment with your pattern density. Uh, because you can go back into the brush and change the scatter randomness, the size um, offset, and the spacing. And you can continue to go back and rework this in order to make it uh, fit the needs of your image a little more closely. Thanks.